One concept that's often used in the discussion of management and governance of firms is that of principal-agent relationships. It uh, has a very strong foundation in the Anglo-American legal tradition, but has also become a theoretical concept that's used in the study of business and governance generally. The idea that there is the principal, so there's the person who brings assets to the firm, the owners of the business as it were, uh, and then the agent, so the people who are employed to work on their behalf, this notion of a principal-agent relationship. And it's got a wide range of applications when we think about management, think about governance, uh, because many of the issues we're concerned about is when agents don't necessarily act in the interests of the principals. So, for example, you're an employer, you employ somebody to work for you, but you don't have the opportunity to monitor their performance actively. So there's lots of scope for what we call agency slack. This is when the agents who should be acting on behalf of the principals actually pursue their own selfish interests at the expense of the principals. Now, of course, in a part-time job, you know, this is if the, the boss is away and you're slacking off and you don't work so hard. Uh, that's, an, that's an example of principal agent slack. The principal agent uh, relationship and the way of thinking in those terms is significant because it also draws our attention to the inherent difficulties that principal has, principals have in defending their interests, in making sure that their agents work well for them, especially in the context of what we call information asymmetry. So if I'm employing people to work in many sites, I can't be watching them. I, I can't be effectively monitoring them. So that's why trust is important. So that makes it difficult for me to actually monitor what my agents are doing. It's even more complicated when you employ someone to do something for you because you can't do it yourself. If you go to a doctor, you as the patient are the principal. The doctor is your agent. It's a service business. You are paying for medical advice. But you go to the doctor because you are not a doctor. You're not capable of diagnosing yourself effectively, so you need that expertise. Similarly, you go to a financial advisor, you go to uh, a structural engineer, if you're an accountant, for example. Well, if you're an architect, <laughs> I don't think accountants need structu uh, structural engineers. If you're an architect um, and you want to go to a structural engineer to see whether the concept you have architecturally can be built. So... What this means is when you go to an expert, there's the great danger that the expert doesn't act as expert as they should, or at least takes advantage of uh, the information asymmetry of your lack of knowledge. And so this raises a lot of questions about how do you select and monitor an agent under the context of information asymmetry. Much of what we see in the world today in terms of reputation, professional reputation, and assurance, so things like licensing, qualifications, come down to this basic information asymmetry problem. So how do principals make sure that their agents act in their interests uh, when they don't have the expertise themselves? Well, one way to do this, of course, is for like-minded agents to overcome a general problem of trust form together in terms of professional associ associations, they police their own membership, they have their codes of conduct, they effectively uh, monitor and very often police literally the entry into the profession, recognizing that all of the members have uh, something to gain from customers, clients, patients, in the case of doctors, uh, will have confidence in using a professional. So in a sense, the principal-agent relationship is underpinned by the collective interests of the agents in boosting their reputation. When we talk about corporate governance, uh, a very specific set of issues of principal-agent relationships arise. This is in the case of the very large company that has many shareholders, often what we call fragmented shareholders or diffused shareholdings, literally tens of thousands of shareholders, 
and then we have a day-to-day -day management team running the company. So how do these very diverse shareholders make sure that their agents, the managers of the companies, act in the interests of the principals, the shareholders? Well, a lot of the practices of corporate governance are geared towards that. Normally there's a board of directors which appoints a number of representatives of shareholders to oversee the management day to day. So in some sense we can think of a, uh, a kind of quasi-principal rela agent relationship between the general shareholders and then the board of directors and the board of directors, the members, should carry out their responsibilities to protect the interests of shareholders very seriously or they can be sued if they don't. Okay, that's a notion of fiduciary duty for example. Then of course the management is accountable to the board of directors. And we can think of a whole chain of principal agent relationships. General employees are engaged by the company which is run by the managers day to day. So we can think of a relationship between the company being the principal then and the agents being the employees. So we see this in so many fields. However, very often under the, the conditions of information asymmetry, people forget the basic principal agent dynamic. Uh, doctors who are often very, how shall we say, confident in their own intelligence given that it's uh, quite difficult to get into medical school, sometimes have uh, a hard time seeing the relationship between the doctor and the patient as the patient being the principal and doctor being the agent. You don't hear too many doctors saying, um, I'm in a service industry. Similarly, in a sense, you know, professors working for universities, uh, we're in a principal-agent relationship with uh, all of the stakeholders in the university. It's of course students in some sense of principals or at least those who are paying for your education um, at Waseda for instance. Uh, but it's not just the case that uh, uh, students or their guardians are the principals, the only principals, because of course Waseda also draws research funds from the government and from Ex other external organizations and we have various uh, societal stakeholders as well so the principal agent relationships get quite complex that's why when we have debates about our students customers for example it often comes down to this complex issues of who's the principal and who's the agent we do sometimes hear people getting annoyed with their doctor or their accountant or their lawyer or whatever and saying um, you work for me, don't forget you work for me, okay? That's just a simple reaffirmation of the principal-agent relationship. Sometimes, of course, the agents have such stature that they can engage in kyaku erabi, in actually choosing the customers. And this is one of the complicated things with universities, particularly prestigious universities, because they're in a strange position of being able to choose who the customers are but in some sense uh, still have very significantly this agent principal relationship with the clients, the customers, the students that they choose. So when, if you get a little bit of pushback from, you know, um, from people on the university side saying, well, students are not the center of the world, um, it's because of course, some of the professors are very research active are often focused on the fact that there are multiple principles accounting their funding bodies such as uh, JSPS, Japan Society for the Promotion of Science, which provides some of the research funds. In the Waseda case though, our largest source of funds by far are yourselves and your parents, okay? So I think it's quite reasonable to think in a way that I am the agent of you guys, the principles, uh, although it's not an absolute relationship. I do have multiple masters, okay? I'm certainly not the master of my own destiny. I am not the principal here by any means.